So now we're going to take a look at the Web Data Grid's Pay to Play model. And the Pay to Play model enables you as a developer to choose which features you want to use and only have those features supporting JavaScript downloaded to the client, as well as those properties supporting that feature included in the object model of the Web Data Grid. Now I know that sounds a little magical, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at exactly what that means and how it can make both your lives and your server's lives easier. So to start out, we're going to go ahead and add a Web Data Grid to our form here. We're going to go ahead and drag that out of our toolbox and drop it onto our form. Now the Web Data Grid is an AJAX enabled control, so it does require a script manager on your form. So you'll notice I have a script manager already included on my form. I've also already created a link data source as the data source that I'm going to bind my Web Data Grid to. You don't have to use a link data source, I just chose to use a link data source in my application. Um, you can use any of the supporting data source controls, uh, which are also covered in another screencast on data binding for the web data grid. So we're going to go ahead and save this so that it'll sync up our design view. And you'll notice that it's asking me if I want to import the default style set. I'm just going to say don't ask me this again because I always want to import that default style set. It just makes things much easier. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK. All right, so now we have our web data grid, and you'll notice that it has this nice arrow-looking style that's applied by default. We're going to go ahead and bind it up to a data source, so I'll click on the smart tag here. I'll drop down my data source list. I'll hook it up to my link data source. you notice it then went and generated my column information. But let's go ahead and take a look at that markup real quickly, because there's something really special here. If we look down, let's go ahead and minimize our column information. You'll notice there's nothing else generated inside of this web data grid. So it doesn't have a huge display layout section that takes up, you know, thousands and thousands of characters with hundreds of properties and attributes. All we see are the top level is the top level web data grid and the columns collection that was generated for our bound data source. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the properties. Uh, we'll click on the web data grid. We'll look at the properties tree over here. And you'll notice as we scroll through this properties tree, there's not a lot of properties that are listed here. So you'll see an enable AJAX. Um, that'll just give you a really quick kill switch for AJAX if you don't want to use it. Uh, it's true by default, so most of the time you won't even need that property. And we'll go ahead and look through some of the other properties here. Not a whole lot. Um, when we look at the... Uh, look for the display layout, there is no display layout. So if you're coming from the web grid days, the idea of display layout has kind of gone away. It's been replaced with this idea of behaviors. So let's go ahead and take a look at the behaviors property. You'll notice that the behaviors property is just a flat property here. There's nothing underneath it. Well, that's because we haven't included any of the behaviors yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the ellipsis button there, and it launches a designer for us. And inside of this designer, I can go ahead and choose which behaviors I want to enable. So let's say I wanted paging, for instance. I'll go ahead and click on paging. I'll say OK. And now my paging behavior is enabled. And you'll notice inside of my grid, in my markup, I now have this behaviors collection. And inside of behaviors, I have paging. And if I go over to my properties grid over here, I'm actually looking at the, behave the properties for uh, paging, or if I go up to my grid control and look at the properties of the grid, I can expand my behaviors collection now, and I have my paging properties listed underneath there. If I was to enable sorting or filtering, those would show up under behaviors as well. So this really allows you to customize the exact object model that you're working with on the web data grid. So for instance, if you're working on a team with some others and you wanted to hand off the grid for them to use, they don't need to learn every single behavior and every single property in order to start working on that application. You can enable a core set of behaviors, let's say sorting and paging. You can hand it off to them and the only things they need to learn about now are sorting and paging. And since all the properties are nested underneath the behavior, they don't have to try to figure out where to look for those properties. They're always going to be in the same place, nested underneath the behavior itself. So let's go ahead and um, view this in the browser. But before I want to do that, I actually want to remove this paging behavior. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. You could also just uncheck it in the designer. Um, it's easier just because I'm here in the ASPX view. And we're going to go ahead and view this in the browser. So we're going to do view in browser. 
And you can do this in Internet Explorer with Firebug, or uh, I'm sorry, you can do this in Firefox with Firebug, or in Internet Explorer. What I'm going to use is the uh, Web Development Helper, and that's just to trace the requests that are happening. So I'm going to go through and enable my Web Developer Helper. So now that our Web Developer Helper has loaded, or Web Development Helper, and you can get this from Nikhil K's site. So if you go down here, NikhilK.net, you could just go to that URL and you can download this tool. Really great for tracing HTTP connections. You can also use Fiddler, or you can use Firebug inside of Firefox. So we're going to go ahead and enable logging here. And I'm just going to refresh this page so it'll go ahead and request all of our items again. And we're going to go ahead and look at what loaded here. And you'll notice these script resources. Well, these down towards the bottom that begin with FXV are the ones that are related to the web data grid. And I can go ahead and click on one of those, and I can look at the response content. And you'll see I have type.registerNamespaceInfragistics.webUI. So you know that this was one of the Infragistics scripts that was being loaded. Um, because the scripts are all named the same and belong to the same namespaces, they end up with the same string prefix here. And that's how you can tell that these were all part of the Infragistics scripts, all the ones that begin with FXV. So we have three scripts that were loaded here for the web data grid, uh, and we can go ahead and take a look at each one of these, but these are the three core scripts that are required to enable the web data grid to run on the client side. You can certainly use script combining if you wanted to, so if you're worried about uh, latency, if you have to support a WAN application that's uh, across the world, you might want to enable script combining so that others don't have to worry about latency of the multiple requests, uh, and script combining will allow you to take all of these script resources, including the Microsoft script resources, and smush them together into a single JavaScript resource. It'll also remove white space. It's a pretty neat utility added as part of Visual Studio 2008 Service Pack 1. Uh, and you can take a look at um, my blog, and there will also be another screencast on using script combining. So if you do want to know more information on that, you can tune in. So anyway, we're going to go ahead back to our... Visual Studio here and enable one of those behaviors. So let's go ahead and edit our behaviors collection and I'm going to go ahead and enable paging. So we'll enable paging. I'll click on OK. And a couple of things. If we go back to our uh, properties now on my grid, if I go into my behaviors property, again you'll remember that I have those properties enabled now. So you'll see my paging properties and I can go ahead and set the properties inside of there. That's the server side representation. So that's the pay to play on the server side. And then if we go ahead and save this and view it in the browser again, we'll just go ahead and refresh our browser window here. And I'm going to go ahead and clear out my last request. And we'll refresh this. And we'll take a look at what loads this time. And I'll bring this up a little bit. And you'll notice this time there are four files that start with FXV that are being loaded onto the client side. And if we take a look at this last one and look at the response content, you'll notice that it begins with IG paging. Now, this is the paging module loaded on the client side. So when you don't have paging enabled, when that behavior isn't added to the grid's behaviors collection, you're not going to get any of that script required for paging sent down to the client side. And that's the pay to play model on the client side. So what you end up with is a minimal request for only the features that you have selected, the ones that you want to use, as well as a minimal footprint on both the client side and the server side because this script never has to be executed if those features aren't enabled. So going back to our server side, if we were to enable four or five more of these properties uh, or behaviors, you would see their scripts being sent down as well. And you would also then see on the server side those properties in the property tree. So let's try it with one more just to show. We'll go into our behaviors collection again. And let's go ahead and enable selection. So we'll enable selection, click on OK. And now inside of my behaviors property here, if I were to expand it, you'll see I have paging and selection. And each one of these then has its sub-properties related to that parent property that we're looking at. So with selection, I can say my cell click action is going to be um, select cell. 
Um, I can go ahead and enable it or disable it if I wanted to from here. And I can remove it if I wanted to by going into the behaviors collection or by simply going into my ASPX and deleting it from here. So if I wanted to just remove paging or remove selection, I can go ahead and delete it out of here and it would no longer be part of my grid. So that's a look at the web data grades pay to play model and you can see it really does enable you to tailor the grid to exactly what you need and this also has an impact on performance because you're getting the most performant grid possible for the features that you've selected. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com